is the rightful heir to the throne after Queen Elizabeth II's death? A person deserves his title with the power to lead and inspire elusive virtues to which he must reach and ascend, remarked Lord Louis Mountbatten in the Netflix series Crown, a series that dramatizes the reign of late Queen Elizabeth II. Now more than ever, this question is a question that hasn't to be answered. Now that the Queen has passed, has the rightful heir earned his title through his power to lead and inspire, or only because bloodline will be followed after all? The world was caught by surprise with the passing of the Queen of the United Kingdom, Queen Elizabeth II, last September 8, 2022. This unexpected passing also ended her 70 years and 214 reign, which is the second longest reign next to the reign of King Louis XIV. With this, in terms of the matter of the title, we can definitely expect some changes. The moment Queen Elizabeth's heart stopped beating, the longest-serving successor in British history, and the eldest son, Prince Charles, became King Charles III. The biggest question of all, is he the rightful heir for a reason or just because it is how it works? In this video, we will know more about the new King of England to find out the answer to the question unanswered. Prince Charles Philip Arthur George, the first child of then Princess Elizabeth and Prince Philip, was born on November 14, 1948 at Buckingham Palace. When his mother gained the kingdom on February 6, 1952, at the young age of three, he became the heir apparent. Prince Charles has spent his whole life in the spotlight, beginning with the now iconic photograph of him at age four sitting between the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret at Elizabeth's coronation ceremony. The former king and queen decided to give him a public school education rather than hire private tutors, making him the first heir to do so. He spent time at a private boarding school in Scotland and studied abroad in Melbourne, Australia for two semesters. While at Cambridge University from 1967 to 1970, Charles became the first heir to the British throne to achieve a bachelor's degree while studying at Trinity College. He began his academic career in the field of history and later shifted his focus to that of archaeology and anthropology. In that year, 1969, at age 20, he was officially named Prince of Wales. A member of the Royal Navy from 1971 to 1976, Charles followed in the footsteps of his father, grandpa, and great-grandfather by piloting helicopters. He began his career as a Royal Air Force pilot and ultimately became the commander of the minesweepers HMS Bronington. Charles earned the moniker Action Man due to his youthful participation in a wide variety of sports, including polo, which he played all over the world, and competitive horseback riding, which he did frequently, as well as frequent appearances in photographs in which he is shown surfing, skiing, and engaging in other activities. His public advocacy spans issues as diverse as healthcare, alternative medicine, education, the arts, and the environment. More than 20 organizations, such as the Prince's Trust, the Prince's Foundation, and the Princess of Wales Charitable Fund were founded with his assistance. In 1980, when he was 31, Charles began dating Lady Diana Spencer. When Charles was seeing Diana's older sister, Sarah, three years prior, he also met Diana. Their engagement was announced in February 1981, and it immediately became the subject of intense media attention. During a TV appearance, Diana stated, of course, when asked if she and Charles were in love, while Charles reacted with, whatever in love means. On July 29, 1981, they wed at St. Paul's Cathedral, and a record-breaking 750 million people around the world watched the ceremony live on television. British citizens were given the day off work. Diana was the first English lady to wed a royal heir since 1660. The couple's first son, Prince William, was born June 21, 1982, and Prince Harry was born two years later, on September 15, 1984. When Diana and Charles split up in 1992, she had the backings of the public thanks to her beauty, grace, and humanitarian work with HIV-AIDS patients, leprosy sufferers, advocates for landmine removal, and homeless people. This was especially true after Charles admitted in an interview given in 1994 that he had been having an affair with Camilla Parker Bowles for a considerable period of time. 
there were three of us in the marriage. Diana eventually clarified. In 1996, Charles and Diana officially ended their marriage and divorced. Sadly, Diana, her companion Dodi al Fayed, and their driver Henry Paul all perished in a vehicle crash in Paris on August 31, 1997. Charles and Parker Bowles announced their engagement in 2004, and the following year they wed and had a child. Parker Bowles was then named Duchess of Cornwall. While an exact date has not been set, he will most likely be crowned in Westminster Abbey in London in 2023, making him the 40th monarch to be crowned there in the building's 900-year history. As the monarch of United Kingdom, Charles is also the head of state for other 53 countries that make up the Commonwealth. William, Charles' son, became the heir apparent and Prince of Wales upon his father's accession to the throne. With the promotion, Camilla now officially holds the title of Queen Consort. Prince William and Kate Middleton have given Charles five grandchildren, Prince George, second in line to the throne, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have given birth to Archie and Lilibet. Even in times of grief, he must be deeply aware that his great inheritance comes with duties and heavy responsibilities of sovereignty as the king of his country and the king of his people. Now, what do you think about the rightful heir? Is King Charles III an heir of purpose or an heir of bloodline? Tell us your thoughts!